Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here. I've got something special for you today that's not necessarily repair related, but it is educational. And that is a comparison between the Acura Integra Type R and the Acura Integra GSR. I happen to be fortunate enough to be the owner of both a 2000 Acura Integra Type R and also a 2001 Acura Integra GSR. These are both original cars unmolested. In fact, I uh, had an exhaust header on the GSR and I've since put that back to the original uh, exhaust that was on the car just for this video so that you can get a chance to see exactly what's different between a Type R and a GSR. Which, let's face it, both of these cars are really just fancy expensive Civics. Let's get started. In addition to owning these awesome cars, I was also an Acura technician from 1997 to about 2008-ish, and the majority of the information that I'm gonna be sharing with you in this video comes directly from Acura, from this, which was a service manual supplement that they sent to us at the dealership in 1997 when the original Acura Integra Type R came out. I'll be covering the, obviously, US DM versions of the Acura Integra. The ones for Europe and Australia and Japan were all different, but in this video, I'm just gonna focus, stric focus strictly on the US DM versions that I have here. The US DM Type R was only available in the US in 1997, 1998, 2000, and 2001. There was no 1999 Type R in the US. The 1997s and 98 came in championship white only. So that was the only color you could get it in 1997 and 98. In 2000 and 2001, it was available in only two colors, Nighthawk Black Pearl and Phoenix Yellow. Incidentally, GSRs were available in the US from 1994 until 2001. Let's start with the differences in body and appearance. Oh, and before we get too far into this, I haven't washed these cars inside or out, so I'm sorry for that, because I drive them. Type R's have this chin spoiler, which you actually could purchase from a dealer and put onto another Integra. When these came off the delivery truck, this spoiler was not installed. It had to be installed during the pre-delivery inspection. GSRs do not have this front chin spoiler, but as I said, you could purchase the front chin spoiler from the dealer and install it onto a GSR or other Integra. A Type R is also distinguishable by this large spoiler in the back. And this isn't just a race me spoiler, this actually provides 30% more downforce to this car. You could also purchase this rear spoiler from the dealer and install it on another Integra. GSRs also came standard with a spoiler, uh, this one not as radical, and it had the taillight or the third brake light assembly within the spoiler itself. The third brake light for the Type R is located in the rear window. The Type R is 15 millimeters lower than the GSR. Here's the front ride height on the GSR. Uh, please note that both of these cars are older and have the original suspensions, which likely settled over time. Here's the ride height in the rear of the Type R. Here's the ride height in the rear of the GSR. So with the front chin spoiler, the rear spoiler, and it being 15 millimeters lower, the Type R actually has 1% less drag than a GSR. Both the Type R and the GSR come stock with 15 inch wheels. The Type R has a five lug hub. The GSR and other Integras use a four lug hub. In addition to the Type R using five lug wheels, they also have a five millimeter greater offset than the GSR stock wheels. Type R's came from the factory with Bridgestone Potenza RE010 performance tires. Customers, I believe, had to sign a waiver when they purchased one of these vehicles, stating that they understood that these tires would only last 7,500 miles. The 1997 and 1998 Type R did not have a rear wiper. The 2000 and 2001 did. The GSR always came with a rear wiper. The GSR trim package came with a sunroof. No Type R's ever came with sunroofs. This is one way you can easily identify them. In addition to reducing weight, the absence of a sunroof on the Type R also gives the body more rigidity. Type R's also have these unique red badges in the front and the rear. The GSR, as well as regular Integras, just came with these silver badges. However, you could purchase a dealer-installed gold package, which this could be swapped out for gold badges. The GSR has the iconic VTEC badge below the right side taillight. The Type R had this Type R sticker underneath the rear taillight. At least that's where it's supposed to be placed. However, a body shop put mine in the incorrect location in the rear. 
Type R's also have Type R badges on the rear quarters of both sides of the car. Some of the most major differences between these two vehicles and sets apart the Type R from other Acura Integras is how the rear of the vehicle was constructed. I can't necessarily show you every one of these, but I'll go over them now. One of the differences that is visible is this reinforcement that's bolted on in the rear of the Type R. The GSR does not have this reinforcement. For this part, let's uh, look at that manual supplement to look at the body enhancements that they did to the Type R. So they had a thicker rear roof rail upper, a thicker rear pillar upper girder, increased rear wheelhouse thickness, uh, thicker rear damper gusset, rear performance rod, which is what I just showed you in the back there, a thicker rear lower arm bracket, a performance rod added to the rear cross member that's underneath. I'll show you that in a minute. They also use thicker real, rear wheel arch extensions. And all of this actually moves some of the weight to the rear and apparently changed the center of gravity to make it more advantageous. Both cars use a strut bar to connect the two upper strut towers. The one on the GSR is steel. The one on the Type R is aluminum with Type R badging. Now, despite those reinforcements in the rear, the 1997 USDM Type R was 93 pounds lighter or 42 kilograms lighter than the GSR. That's in 1997. As they went on through the years, they got heavier. As I mentioned, My2000 has a rear wiper arm. Uh, the original 97s and 98s did not have vanity mirrors, but mine has vanity mirrors. So it's interesting how uh, it crept up in weight over time, but the lightest versions or for the USDM market are gonna be the 1997s. Here's a chart showing the differences in weight of the Integra Type R over the years. Continuing on with the discussion of weight reduction on the Type R, the 1997 and 1998 Type R did not come with air conditioning, although you could have it dealer installed. This was to save weight. The 2000 and 2001 model, I believe, it could be installed at the factory. This one, I believe, was factory installed and uses a lightweight condenser. Also for weight savings, the Type R did not come with cruise control in any of the years it was available in the US. The GSR did come with cruise control and the main switch is located here. Now let's talk about the interiors. This GSR has a very nice leather interior. Type R's never came with leather in the US. Uh, they came with these cloth seats with this red stitching. It's somewhat Spartan compared to the GSR, although it did come with a leather wrapped steering wheel from the beginning. The GSR didn't come with a leather wrapped steering wheel until about 99. The Type R came with this carbon fiber-like material on the center console. It's not actual carbon fiber, it's just plastic made to look like it. It's also on the driver's side vent, but strangely not on the passenger side vent. The GSR just uses plain black plastic for the center console. Also for the driver's vent. Passenger vents appear to be the same in both cars. Type R's came with this iconic number plate on the center console. It's supposed to represent the production number of the vehicle uh, released in the US. However, these numbers don't necessarily match up with the number of Type R's sold in the US. I don't really have an explanation for this. The 1997 and 1998 Type R came with a leather wrap shift knob with red stitching. The 2000 and 2001's came with this metal shift knob. Uh, the leather shift knob, in my opinion, is a little bit nicer. These metal ones are cool because I like the weight, but really cold in the winter, really hot in the summer. Uh, the leather, however, that would deteriorate over time and sometimes peel away from the stitching. This GSR also came with a leather wrap shift knob. This is quite a common occurrence on the leather wrap shift knob, sadly. The driver's seat on the Type R only has minor adjustments available. Both the GSR and the Type R have lumbar adjustments. The GSR has a more adjustable front seat 
However, older GSRs had a seat similar to the Type R. Type Rs came with their own special floor mats with the logo in the floor mat. These have seen better days for sure. Here's the passenger side. Rear mats on the Type R aren't anything special, but they should be on the correct side and these are not. Well, that's a little better. These are not the original floor mats for the GSR. These are actually out of a TSX. These are the original floor mats for the GSR. One thing that's noticeable when driving a Type R is that it is louder than a GSR. And part of the reason for that is that they did not put any insulation uh, between the carpet and the front firewall in order to save weight. Here's what you'll find under the carpet of the GSR. And by the way, I should have mentioned this is the passenger side floorboard. Uh, when you pull the carpet back on the GSR, you'll see this uh, black insulating material that's here. You won't see the bare metal like you did on the Type R. And this is for sound deadening and also insulation. Now, both the Type R and the GSR have the vanity mirrors, as I mentioned, but the GSR has these map lights. The Type R does not. Now, I've turned the lights off in the shop to show you what I feel is one of the coolest features of the Type R, and that is the lighting. The lighting on the Type R is red, uh, not only here in the instrument cluster, but also in the center console and on the radio. This is unique to the Type R. No other Integra has this type of lighting. Another thing unique to the Type R instrument cluster is the font is the same as an NSX. Also, the red line is 8400. The clock is also this red-orange color, and sadly, mine has this weird little pixel thing going on. The GSR just has regular uh, white illumination for the cluster and the HVAC. Also, the radio when it's stock. I don't have a stock radio installed in mine. The clock on the GSR, as well as other Integras, is this white slash bluish color. The 1997 and 1998 Type R came with a special key similar to what they had with the NSX. In 2000 and 2001, they only painted a red Acura symbol inside the key. Uh, over here on the left is the GSR with this white Acura symbol. Uh, these keys also contain chips for the immobilizer system, which is an anti-theft system, and maybe the reason why they didn't make a special key for 2000 and 2001. Let's look under the hoods, shall we? This is under hood on the GSR. This is a B18C1 engine, which is a dual overhead cam VTEC engine. Uh, VTEC was first used by Honda in their racing program, and then the first production vehicle to have VTEC was the NSX. The Acura Integra, the GSR, in the U.S. got this in 1994. This engine originally produced 170 horsepower at 7,600 RPM and 128 foot-pounds of torque at 6,200 RPM. Its compression ratio is 10 to 1. This is the B18C5 in the Type R. It is very similar to the B18C1, however, it does produce more power. Uh, this engine produces 195 horsepower at 8,000 RPM, uh, 130 pound-feet of torque at 7,500 RPM. Its compression ratio is 10.6 to 1. The B18C5 was an engineering marvel of sorts for its time, as you can see by this paragraph. It is the most powerful, normally aspirated, mass-produced automobile engine per liter ever produced. Pretty cool, right? Even though there's a 20 horsepower difference between the two engines, I don't notice a big difference while driving them, and here's why. Here are the power curves for the two engines. The solid black line is the Type R, and the dotted line is the GSR. And as you can see, they're almost identical. However, the GSR seems to have a little bit more torque. Now, the difference in horsepower actually doesn't happen until you're up here above 7,000 RPM. That's the real difference between these two engines, and the torque curve continues here. So normal driving in this RPM range, you really don't notice too much of a difference between the two vehicles, at least in my mind. It's only until you get into this upper RPM range. Now that's not to say that driving the Type R isn't a heck of a lot of fun because it is louder and you definitely hear it when VTEC kicks in, yo. But as you can see by this chart released by the factory, they are very similar. And this illustrates my theory that I've had about these engines all along, and that is, Horsepower is torque times RPM divided by 5252. What they did with the Type R engine 
was they lightened up the valve train and made it so that you could have a higher RPM. As a result, that's where the extra horsepower comes in. The Type R has a specifically tuned intake system, and the inlet for this is actually inside this fender here. The GSR has a similar intake system, except for it draws air from right here behind the ABS unit instead of inside the fender well. And here's a better view of those intake boxes. Like I said, the GSR pulls it in from inside the engine compartment. The Type R pulls it in from behind that fender. There are a couple of visual differences between the two engines you can spot right off. The first of which is the intake manifold. On the GSR, you can see it's much larger and it's also a two-stage intake manifold. The B18C5 and the Type R uses a single-stage manifold. Here's a better view of the differences in those intakes. So there are a lot of incredible things that they did to the B18C5 to make it as awesome as it is. And one of those things was instead of the cross section of the valve springs being circular, it's actually oval. I found that to be an interesting fact. It also employed lighter intake valves. Uh, they made the, this part of the stem smaller to accomplish that. Here's some of the specifics of what they did to the valve train. Looking for a torque spec on the connecting rods of a B18C5? Well, you may not find one. Honda wants you to use this special tool to measure axial tension when fastening down connecting rods on this engine. Here's some more details on the upgrades to the Type R engine. B-series engines commonly leak from the cam plug, the distributor O-ring, and the VTEC solenoid. One thing that's common to both the B18C1 and B18C5 is they both burn oil. In fact, all B-series engines burn oil. They did it when they were brand new. Customers complained about it. I'm not sure if Honda ever found a fix to it, but if you have a B-series Honda engine, be sure to check and top off your oil often. Both the GSR and the Type R employ five-speed manual transmissions. However, they have different gear ratios. Here's a chart showing the differences between the two transmissions. The Type R also has a limited slip differential, and that can be identified by that LSD on the outside of the transmission case. So now let's talk about something I can't necessarily show you on the car, which I think is one of its greatest features, and that is the limited slip differential on the Type R. For those of you not familiar with what a limited slip is, in a traditional open differential, which is in most vehicles that are out there, traction is actually sent to the wheel, or power is sent to the wheel with the least amount of traction, which you know, seems counterintuitive, but that's the way it is. And it actually helps with cornering of the vehicle. Anyway, so for example, say you've got one wheel that's on ice or, or one wheel that's slipping or something like that. The power will go to that one wheel and the opposite wheel won't move at all. Well, that's not the case with a limited slip type differential. And what that does is it basically makes it so that both wheels get equal power uh, from the engine. And in the Type R, they do this in a very interesting way. They use helical gears inside the differential to do this. So in other words, uh, as one wheel starts to slip, this gear walks along the inside of this other gear, and as it does, it forces itself against the inside of the, the case of the differential, thus locking the whole thing into place. And as a result, it gives you that limited slip action. It's, it's really kind of a neat and interesting system, except when it wears out. When this wears out, you've got to replace the differential. There's no way around it. It is an interesting system, but that is the one drawback to this type of limited slip differential. The Type R does use a heavy duty clutch and clutch feel is different between the two cars. You might hear that squeaking. Uh, that's actually common with Civics and Integras and it's an easy fix. Just uh, take a little bit of lubricant and put it on the end of the slave cylinder uh, where it attaches to the clutch fork. Another difference between the Type R and GSR is the transmission mounting. Uh, the Type R is, well, stiffer and more reinforced, and this is particularly noticeable on hard acceleration when you're shifting gears. Uh, it's much smoother on the Type R than it is with the GSR, and I believe it's due to this, uh, up, uh, this beefed up transmission mount. The Type R also has an upgraded ABS unit, and it looks very similar to the one on the GSR, although I can tell you it does sound and act differently. Now let's get these on the lift one by one and compare the brakes, suspension, and exhaust. Here is the undercarriage on the GSR. Here's the undercarriage on the Type R.
One of the main differences in the two chassis is the rear suspension and everything the rear suspension bolts to, as you'll see in this clip. This is the GSR. I think you'll note that there's a lot more reinforcement back here. Yes, I'm aware of the corrosion and things that are back here, but this is another stiffener that you won't find on a GSR. Also, these lower control arms and the way they attach and everything, you can see it's very different than what it is on the GSR. Also, a much thicker rear stabilizer bar, which we'll measure here in a minute. Type R also uses uh, larger diameter axles as well as different CV joints. The exhaust on the Type R also has a larger diameter than the GSR. Exhaust manifolds on both of these cars are also different. Um, this is the downpipe on the GSR. You'll note that the exhaust on the Type R has a smoother transition than the GSR. It's also of a larger diameter. This is what the difference in exhaust looks like on paper. Front stabilizer bar on the GSR is roughly uh, 24 millimeters. Front stabilizer bar on the Type R is 24 millimeter. Rear stabilizer bar on the GSR is roughly 13 millimeters. The rear stabilizer bar on the Type R is substantially larger. It is 22 millimeters. Here's detail on the front suspension and brakes of the GSR. You can see this one's four lug. There's a control arm, a spring. Here's a detail on the front suspension and brakes of the Type R. Here's detail of the rear suspension and brakes on the GSR. The coil springs on the rear of a GSR are not progressive rate. Here's a detail on the rear suspension and brakes on the Type R. The coil springs on the rear of the Integra Type R are of a progressive rate. Here's some more detail on the suspension upgrades between the GSR and Type R. As you can see, they've done a lot of things, increasing damping rates. Uh, rear springs are progressive instead of just linear. Uh, there were a lot of upgrades to the suspension on the Type R. Here's something I want to share with you about the Type R brakes that I've come to discover and something I suspected all along. If you look at these numbers, as far as the size of the rotors, they're the exact same size as an Accord V6 of the late 90s. So in other words, I believe what they did was they took the brakes from an Accord V6, something that they already had, and put them on the Integra. And this is what makes the brakes so awesome. There's, the brakes are designed to stop a car that's much larger and much heavier on a smaller car. And that's what really makes the braking performance stand out on this. So if you're looking to upgrade the brakes on your Civic or Integra, you might consider looking for some V6 Accord brakes and putting them on and basically make yourself a poor man's Type R. Now here are some differences between the USDM Type R and Type R's that were available in Europe, Asia, and also Australia. Uh, those other vehicles or those other Type R's got uh, Recaro seats. They also got a Momo steering wheel. And instead of a 10.6 to one compression ratio with the B18C5, they had an 11 to one compression ratio in their engines. I suspect this may be because uh, higher octane fuels are more readily available in these markets. I really don't know for sure. A couple of final notes. This Type R is the seventh Integra that I've owned. So I've, I've had quite a bit of experience and I go all the way back to the original Integras as well. And I had an 87 CRXSI as well. So I've, I've sort of been in the camp of Honda's small sports cars for quite some time. I consider the Type R to be one of the high watermarks that they created. Uh, one of the things that I like about driving the car so much over driving the GSR is the handling and the braking is exceptional. That is where Honda put their money. And if you're trying to upgrade your Civic, I mean, take a look at what these Honda engineers did. They focused on the rear suspension a lot. So take a look at that. 
uh, if you're trying to improve the handling on say a Honda Civic, which is in essence what these cars are, is what I said at the top of, this, of the top of this video. As I also said, I wasn't as impressed with the engine performance. Not that I wasn't impressed and not that I don't enjoy the sound, but as you can clearly see by the power curves and everything that I showed you, that horsepower gain is actually way up towards the top of the RPM range. Nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that the difference between driving the two cars, I didn't really notice as much seat of the pants power difference uh, as I did the handling and the braking. Like I said, those things are standout. The one thing that really, really stands out on the Type R though is that limited slip differential. That thing changes everything about a front wheel drive car, like everything. I, I really can't describe to you. Between the handling, the braking, and that limited slip differential, it's an amazing car. And I'm not saying the GSR isn't. The GSR is fun to drive. In fact, it is more drivable than the Type R. I mean, you drive down the road in the Type R, you're doing this. You jiggle around a lot. It's a, it's a sports suspension, that's the way it is. But I'll throw it in any corner, any corner, as long as I feel I got grip. And you know, as long as with the right tires, you've got enough grip, trust me. And I think the power band on the, on the Type R, the power delivery of the Type R, is ideal for what it is. I don't think it needs to be a whole lot of horsepower. I'd like to see maybe a little more bottom end torque, but as, as far as that engine, as far as a complete package, I really like what they did, and that's just my personal opinion. I'll put links in the description to additional information if you want to learn more about this stuff. I will be doing videos on the Type R, but I intend to drive it for a while before I tear it down and start doing stuff to it. I'll wait a long time for this car. I'm going to enjoy it for a bit. Once again, links in the description to additional information and stuff. Um, thank you so much for tuning in today. If you have automotive questions, I ask that you head over to ericthecarguy.com. I'll link that in the description as well. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this video with the world. I really appreciate it when you do that stuff. Thank you so much for watching today. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and I'll see you next time.